good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today to celebrate my first 100 days as governor of Arizona. The folks standing here behind me represent organizations and individuals who have played an active role in my first 100 days and who've benefited from the actions that we've taken so early in my term. We've already made a difference in the lives of so many Arizonans, and that is truly the best part of this job. You're gonna hear from a couple of these folks uh, in a few minutes, um, and there's so many of you here. Thank you so much for being here. I wanna particularly acknowledge uh, President and First Lady Nygren from, who made a long trip here today from the Navajo Nation who are here. Lieutenant Governor Monica Antone from the Gila River, River Indian Community, thank you for being here with us. My office's partnership with Gila River and Arizona's 22 tribes has been a highlight of my first 100 days. From the executive order I signed to establish a task force on missing and murdered indigenous people, to the announcement last week of billions of new dollars to expand access to clean water for tribal communities in Arizona, we will continue to work alongside our tribal leaders to make sure that indigenous communities thrive. I also want to recognize and thank Mayor Giles for being here today. Mayor Giles and I may not be in the same political party, but we share a deep commitment to working together to do what's best for the people we were elected to serve. His leadership has ushered in a new era of economic vitality that benefits not only Mesa, but the entire East Valley and our state as a whole. I often say that my administration works with cities and towns rather than mandating top down from the ninth floor. And Mayor Giles has been an incredible partner to, as we work to strengthen our communities. And thank you to Joan Service, our housing department director for being here today. Joan plays an incredibly important role in this administration. As many of you know, I was a social worker before I ran for office, and my first job out of college was working with homeless youth in Phoenix. Since then, our homelessness numbers have skyrocketed, and our affordable housing investments have plummeted. That's why I proposed a historic investment uh, of $150 million for the Housing Trust Fund in my executive budget, and I'm optimistic that we'll make progress on that in our forthcoming budget, and I'm confident that Joan is the right person to lead this agency. I am so proud of the work we've done these first 100 days to hit the ground running and follow through on the promises I made while I was running for this office. You probably heard me say more than once on the campaign trail, this election isn't about Democrats versus Republicans, it's about sanity versus chaos. You're gonna to continue to hear me say it, because I've carried that sentiment with me to the governor's office. Every single day, I recommit to putting partisanship aside and governing our state with common sense, Arizona first solutions. I've chosen to keep my focus on the issues Arizonans told me they wanted their next governor to prioritize. I've signed more than 40 bills into law that passed the, legis that passed the legislature with bipartisan support. In fact, the first bill I signed was sponsored by Republican Senate President uh, Peterson. As promised, I'll work with anyone who has a good idea to move our state forward. Now, I've also had to use my veto pen a lot already, but part of my promise to bring sanity to our state government means stopping the conspiracy theories, the attacks on our freedoms, and the out-of-touch legislation that frankly isn't doing anything to address serious issues. I'll continue to veto bills like that, but I'll also continue to prioritize the issues Arizonans tell me they are most concerned about. Take education. As the sister of two public school teachers, I'm intimately familiar with the challenges that educators are facing that are causing them to leave the profession and leave our students without enough high quality educators. That's why I created the Educator Retention Task Force made up of a diverse group of educators from across our state who will each bring a unique perspective on how we can hold onto our best and brightest teachers. Border security is another area where we need solutions, not more political theater. In my State of the State address, I said I would stop politicizing our southern border and instead get to work on real border security. In my first week, I made it a priority to ask Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas to come to Arizona's border and see firsthand the burden we bear because of Washington's inaction. Last month, together in Nogales, 
Secretary Mayorkas and I announced a new operation to stop deadly fentanyl from reaching our border. In just its first week, this operation successfully intercepted 100 pounds of cocaine, 700 pounds of methamphetamine, and 900 pounds of fentanyl. That's not a political talking point. That is real action that saves lives. Looking back on these first 100 days, we've already taken action on so many urgent issues, including reproductive rights, water, corrections reform, and infrastructure, just to name a few more. If we want to continue the incredible economic growth that we've seen in our state, if we want to make sure companies continue to move here, start here, and grow here, if we truly want to make Arizona the best place to live and have a family, we must address these critical issues. The first 100 days is just the beginning. There is so much more to do, but I'm excited about the foundation we've laid and where we're going next. As we look forward, I would reiterate what, I've said, what I said to the legislature on that very first day I took office. Let's put partisanship aside and focus on the work we are sent here to do. Arizonans deserve no less. With that, I will turn it over to Lieutenant Governor Antone. Thank you. Good day. My name is Monica Antone, Lieutenant Governor for the Gila River Indian Community. It is a true honor to be here today to celebrate Governor Hopps' first 100 days in office. I have seen her and witnessed her work at a fast pace of communicating with tribal leaders and elevating tribal relations with tribal government, as stated. It's been a real honor to watch her make the promises that she brought forward and she proved this by coming to the Gila River Indian community to hear testimony on the boarding school era, the trauma and abuse that our people as indigenous people inflicted. That was a true leader. It was stated by Secretary of Interior Deb Holland that it was the first governor to come on to tribal lands and hear those stories. As stated, Governor Hobbs was the first to initiate the Missing and Murder Task Force and I'm grateful for my colleagues that work with her in the Senate office from the Native American Caucus here. Senator Hathotali and many of them have stood behind to make sure that they work together. I agree Governor Hobbs has been a bipartisan measure to make sure that she's working for the great state of Arizona. I also want to conclude with stating that as tribal nations, um, we're very honored to watch Governor Hobbs in her first 100 days work at a fast pace for our people. Not just indigenous people, but people of diverse communities, the Hispanics, the African American. I've seen her work with her advisory committees that she has formed and listening to us. And that's what we needed was to listen. Have a governor listen to the real truth that are happening. And more importantly, from the bottom of my heart, I thank her for looking into the social living crisis right away and holding agencies accountable for what we've been plagued with, with indigenous people. So with that, I'm here in honor to celebrate Governor Hobbs' first 100 days. She is truly a leader that has stepped up for our people. Sapo, thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And thank you, Governor Hobbs. As mentioned, my name is Joan Service and I am the Arizona Department of Housing Director. I want to thank you all for having, having me here. It, we might be celebrating her first 100 days in office, but it was on her second day where I joined her um, in a, a repairing a, the roof of a mobile home of a local Avondale residence. She quite literally picked up a circular saw and got to work. <laughs> it was later that same week, through executive order, she reconvened the Governor's Interagency and Community Council on Housing and Homelessness. This private, public, partner, and community-based uh, group will work on addressing our state's housing crisis. And even later that week, her executive budget included a $150 million investment to the State Housing Trust Fund, a state resource addressing our housing challenges from street homelessness to home ownership and mortgage foreclosure prevention. And then most recently, signing legislation with an emergency clause that provides more housing, more, I'm sorry, more funding for mobile homeowners to re relocate when their park closes, timely with three parks closing in Phoenix. 
our governor recognizes that by building an, an Arizona for everyone and making home affordable and available, every Arizonan has the opportunity to succeed. And now I'd like to introduce Mesa Mayor John Giles. Uh, several pounds ago, I used to run marathons. Uh, if you're a distance runner, you know that the first mile of the race is just the first mile. To run a great race, you need to have a good start, but you also have 25 more miles ahead of you. You have to set the right pace and stay focused on the job ahead. Katie Hobbs knows this is a marathon, not a sprint. She understands that the state needs to tackle our challenges with sustainable long-term solutions for all Arizonans. But to have a good race, as I said earlier, you have to have a good start, and Katie Hobbs is off to a great start. Governor Hobbs has protected the local controls that help Arizona's cities and towns chart their own course. When local services and public safety funds were at risk, she used her veto stamp to ensure cities and towns like Mesa will be able to continue to needs of our residents. Under her leadership, we continue to see economic development success across the state. She's also aggressively promoting our state abroad, including opening trade offices in South Korea and Taiwan. Governor Hobbs has been in Mesa and other cities, breaking ground and cutting ribbons for microchip supply chain companies, advanced manufacturing businesses, and celebrating growth in aerospace and defense. These cutting edge industries are just part of the massive investment transforming Arizona's economic landscape, and that's not by accident. I'll be excited to be with Governor Hobbs as we continue welcoming many more of these businesses to my city and our state in the near future. Governor Hobbs knows the value of a skilled workforce in attracting business to our state. As a parent and a grandparent, I have to say that I appreciate that she continues to invest in K-12 education, training programs, and higher ed opportunities for all Arizonans. Governor Hobbs comes from a family of educators, so it's no surprise that she is a champion of education. In February, she joined me in welcoming First Lady Dr. Jill Biden to Mesa to talk about the importance of workforce development, including our own Mesa College Promise Program. Marathon running is a solo sport, but Governor is playing for Team Arizona. In a divided government, she's been forced to be a great defensive player, but she's also gone on the offensive for a lot of our shared priorities. I can't talk about economic development without highlighting one of the most important investments in our state's history, Proposition 400. We are in the fastest growing county in America but we have no plan in place to finance future transportation infrastructure. Please think about that. All the amazing success our region has seen in the last several decades is thanks to this wise investment, but it's on shaky ground right now. Governor Hobbs gets that, and she's committed to getting our regional transportation plan on the ballot where it belongs. In her first 100 days, Governor Hobbs has shown Arizona that she's committed to finding real, long-term solutions to our state's challenges. I appreciate that. Governor Hobbs, I look forward to working with you to achieve your vision of an Arizona for everyone. Thank you. There's certainly a lot of room to find common ground. Um, we have demonstrated that in the fact that uh, I have been meeting regularly with leadership to uh, to talk about a budget. I think we're very close to a bipartisan agreement there. I don't think anyone thought we would be at that place in the first 100 days, and so I'm really encouraged by that. It shows that um, when there's a common goal, uh, we can work together. And you know, I think the the mobile home legislation that was um, that, that uh, director service ref reference is another area. We have a housing crisis, and there's a lot of room to come together to address the affordability issues that we have for in Arizona. Governor, uh, Governor you 
been dubbed the Veto Queen, your reaction to that nickname, is that something you embrace? And then can you talk a little bit about why you vetoed, I don't have the number, uh, but it was yesterday, uh, the, bill, the fentanyl bill. Um, Yes, so I, I did not come here to veto bills. I came here to solve real issues for Arizonans, and I've made it clear that I, I'm not going to support legislation that doesn't address the real issues we're facing. And so um, the legislature has, you know, certainly put that to the test. Um, but as I also mentioned, I've had the chance to sign a lot of legislation, bipartisan legislation, into law, and I'm proud of that as well. Um, the fentanyl bill yesterday. Um, I, w what I would like to see is a more narrow solution that focuses specifically on uh, the manufacturer of fentanyl rather than has the potential to, um, to uh, criminalize uh, substance abuse, f folks with substance abuse disorder. Go to our um, oh, Actually, it was named. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Governor, some of the biggest policy priorities you have related to things like housing, water, funding for education, are issues that will need to go through the legislature mm -hmm. to make substantial change happen. How much should your supporters judge you on your ability to get that done this year or next year while there's a Republican majority in the legislature? Or how much do they need to wait a couple more years while you attempt to flip control of those changes? Well, I think, as I mentioned, uh, we have been making real progress on a bipartisan budget, and I am optimistic about seeing uh, the results of uh, or, or significant progress towards those issues in the budget that we um, that we agree to. Uh, Elizabeth? Going back to myself for a second, mm -hmm. today the White House declared that xylazine is an emerging threat, and the DEA has found it mixed in Arizona fentanyl. Mm -hmm. What steps particularly are you taking for that? Well, the the program that uh, that I was in Nogales um, when Secretary Mayorkas announced and has made already several uh, apprehensions of drugs, um, that's an important step, and we'll work closely with the federal authorities on this issue. Um, most of the fentanyl comes through the ports of entry, and so that federal cooperation is really critical. Mark? Governor, is there a moment in time uh, in this session where attitudes towards you began to change from the other side. When you first came in, there was an attempt to just steamroll you on budget, uh, on education issues, that sort of thing. Today, and then as you, you, you build upon what you told us a, a couple of weeks ago about the fact that you're meeting now with leaders on the other side. What was, if you could share, that moment where people just started to say, okay, we have to deal with it. Well, I, I'll just tell you that I've had an open door policy from day one. Um, I that is not just rhetoric; that is real. And we've invited legislators to meet with me um, to find areas of common ground. I think that um, uh, in terms of the budget, I made it clear that I wasn't going to entertain a budget that didn't have bipartisan support and that negotiated that tackled some of our toughest issues. And I think. Um, uh, when the Republicans sent their do nothing budget, they they realized that, and so this is where we are today. And I'm, you know, happy for that progress. Was there any well, just just one, one just one yeah. question. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what shifted on their side, um, but I I've continued to have an open door policy. Michael, now you talk a lot about bipartisanship relationships. What is that relationship right now, especially with Senate Republicans who have held up different sort of uh, appointments that you've had? Uh, pushed a lot of legislation, hit you in the press for things. How would you describe that relationship with the other side? Um, you know, I served for eight years in the legislature, and during that time I was uh, part of the, not just minority, but super minority. Republicans had super majorities in both chambers. And I was able to work across the aisle and get things done. It really comes down to not taking things personally and finding the areas where you can find common ground, knowing that there's going to be disagreements on, on other areas. How would you describe the relationship right now? Yeah, I mean, I think that we are making significant progress, like I mentioned, on a budget. Um, there's other bipartisan legislation that we can agree on. Um, that doesn't mean we're going to agree on everything. I think there's there's give and take there. And um, finding those areas of common ground and not taking the disagreements personally is really the most important thing. Sir, um, Governor, you recently vetoed a provision or a bill, rather, that would uh, limit or make silencers more accessible. 
Um, what is your message to Republicans who are still trying to advocate for active gun legislation in the wake of so many mass shootings across the nation? Yeah, I am ready and willing to sign into law common sense reforms that keep all Arizonans safer. And this legislation is not one of those one of those common sense reforms. Governor, one of the things that we're hearing about every single week is about potholes, particularly in northern Arizona, and the disrepair of some Arizona roads, uh, to the point where tires are falling off, people are getting in crashes. Talked to a lot of lawmakers yesterday uh, about this problem, and some people are smiling and nodding in the background. One of the questions I have for you is, you know, what is your office doing right now in the short term on a maybe daily basis to solve this problem, and then long term with funding and her funds to try and address the pothole problem across our state? Yeah, this is something that's part of, of ADOT's plan. We are working closely with them to uh, to uh, to solve this. It's a huge issue across the state, um, and uh, we're working with them to ensure that there's funding to, uh, to address it. Do you think it's happening quickly enough? Is there any pressure that you can put on ADOT and the people who work for you uh, to try and address these problems and not just do patchwork? I mean, certainly the the severe weather we've had across the state this winter has exacerbated the problem, um, and um, and so it's elevated right now. Um, you know, a lot of times government is slow and bureaucratic, um, but we're doing everything we can to address this as quickly as possible. Back to the budget, you mentioned that you're working with Republicans on specific items. What are those specific items that you've been talking with that are? I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk specifics here. Last question. Well, on the housing trust fund, mm -hmm. 150 million dollars. What kind of reaction are you getting from Republican lawmakers, and particularly members of the Freedom Caucus? Uh, there is certainly acknowledgement that housing is an issue that we're in a, a moment of crisis and that we need to take um, uh, significant action and that's part of the action that we're that we're discussing but how, how do they feel about the size of what you're asking uh, i guess you'll see when we release our budget proposal <laughs> <laughs> oh we're uh we are very close thank you yeah thanks everyone